There are different types of decentralization, like political and administrative. When most of us hear the term decentralization, we're probably more familiar with how an organization functions, whether its hierarchy runs from the top to the bottom or vice versa. Truly, most of us can work better in a decentralized environment because there's more autonomy and a little more freedom. And this is all well and good, but the decentralization that I'd like to give a little attention to in this video revolves around finance and crypto. Yeah, there's a decentralization element to that as well. Why is this important? Because when it comes to crypto and finances, decentralization is the wave of the future. We're going to look at exactly what that means for us, what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks. But before we get into that, hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications to help support our channel. Now, let's jump right in. What is decentralization? In a blockchain, decentralization refers to how crypto is controlled and how decisions are made. Unlike our financial institutions today, which make many of the financial decisions for us, decentralization allows the network of crypto owners to be less reliant on each other to have their own level of control. In other words, you don't have to depend on anyone else to make decisions. While decentralization has been around for a long time, it's never been used in this context and this sheds a whole new light on how crypto works since it's run through the blockchain with no central authority. How does decentralization relate to the world of finance and crypto? Remember the recession of 2008 when banks were bailed out with American taxpayer dollars due to their own bad investment choices and their cryptic loans? Yeah, that wasn't a good time for the American people or our finances. In fact, many people came to the conclusion that banks held too much power as a result of that whole fiasco. Why should one entity have so much autonomy when it comes to the money supply? Banks were bailed out the American people weren't, and it was the banks that caused the recession in the first place. Then came Bitcoin and the blockchain and now crypto. The whole concept around decentralization was to give some financial power back to the American people, to even the financial playing field, if you will. The idea was to create a global money network run by the people for the people. There are few restrictions and more power for the people that actually buy Bitcoins and crypto. What are the benefits of decentralization? In a decentralized blockchain, you don't have to know anyone else in the network. You don't even have to trust anyone else, but everyone has the same data available to them. This data is decentralized so that every member has access to real-time data. So if one person's ledger that contains the data is altered in any way, it's rejected by the majority of the members. Given that fact, Decentralization makes it difficult for a group of individuals to collude against others or to act in a way that would benefit themselves over others. First off, you don't know who the other individuals are. And if you did anything to compromise the chain, you would also be hurting yourself because the majority rules. Decentralization also improves data recovery. Typically, with data moving back and forth and among groups of people, it's very easy for human error to happen. There could easily be a loss of information or misinformation but with decentralized data, everything is real time and every member of the blockchain has a shared impression of the data. Decentralization lessens the degree of shortcomings in any particular area. Sometimes, dependency is placed more on certain elements than others and should these elements fail, weaken, or are not able to deliver as promised, it can disrupt the entire chain of command. Because no one person is depending on another in a decentralized system, it lessens the chance of that happening. In a decentralized system, you get a better, more optimized distribution of resources, and you get that with better performance and consistency without the likelihood of a failure. Disadvantages to decentralization. If you consider it long enough, there's always a drawback to something, regardless of how great it sounds. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it's going to be the people that create the decentralized system, and it will be human involvement that will be the bad seed of anything negative that happens with it. For instance, let's take the blockchain. In order for the chain to run smoothly, software needs to be applied. But what if the software that was created by humans, by the way, has a bug? What if the team that developed the software has a motive? Human motivations can bring about a lot of other issues like bribery or coercion. Who's even to say that a backdoor wasn't created that would cause the system to fail in the first place? The bottom line is that even a decentralized system can have faults. Nothing is perfect. And if human interaction is needed to create the system, then we can probably expect it to come crumbling down at some point. 
Careful consideration for any decentralized system needs to be given from every aspect, including who the idea originates with. Decentralization could change everything. The truth is, the world is always evolving and technology keeps us two steps ahead of everything. How far will decentralization take us? What role will crypto and the blockchain play in the capital market? Will the flow of money move from traditional financial institutions to the blockchain? It may be too soon to know. But know this, anyone can take part in the world of decentralized financial structure with the purchase of crypto. From the little guy with barely a cent to his name to the CEO of Wall Street, they are all treated the same in the blockchain. In fact, there is no little guy. Everyone is on the same level and gets to make the same decisions. Majority rules. The American people get their financial power back and everything is as it should be in the world. The bottom line is decentralization holds the promise for a new financial outlook and how doing business with financial institutions would look. It can democratize the financial sector and level the playing field for everyone. Thanks for watching and remember to turn on our channel's notifications. You don't want to miss our next video.